welcome to this wildlife photography tutorial and today I've picked out a few tips if you're just getting started. Now if you are a beginner in wildlife photography sometimes it's easy to get overwhelmed there's so many things to think about uh, in terms of equipment or the technical side the exposure uh, you might have some people telling you things you should be doing things you shouldn't be doing but I think as a beginner it's important to learn and get better at your craft but I also think it's really important to enjoy the process and not to get too frustrated along the way so today I've picked out five things that I think you should concentrate on if you're a beginner Number one is to concentrate on the lens. Now, unless you're using some kind of bridge camera or compact where it's kind of all in one, you're basically gonna have two pieces of kit. You're gonna have your camera body and you're going to have your lens. And you wanna choose a lens that's gonna be good enough if you're photographing birds and animals to get reasonably frame filling shots. Now, these days the camera bodies have become so advanced, there's amazing kit out there. And the new camera bodies can definitely help to improve your images and really help you to get better wildlife photographs. But I would still say the lens is slightly more important. So this largely comes down to budget if you've got a choice with budget and you have to make a choice you know you're going to spend more money on your camera body or you're going to spend more money on your lens then given that this is a really important piece of glass and it could be something that lasts for a long time potentially you could change camera bodies and keep the same lens uh, then i definitely think you should concentrate more on the lens than the camera body and the next one is also about equipment and this is to do with camera support so when you're making your decision on the camera body and the lens, then you also want to think about how you're going to uh, carry that in the field, but also how you're going to support it. So for example, if you decide to go for a very big, heavy telephoto lens, then almost certainly you're going to need a tripod to support that, uh, maybe on a gimbal head or a fluid head perhaps even a ball head, but that's gonna influence your decision-making process. If you need that, then it's something else to think about, something else to have, something else to carry, and also more money that you've got to spend as well. Now, it might be the case that your equipment's light enough uh, that you think you can handhold it most of the time, so you're not gonna need the tripod. I would suggest if you're gonna handhold then you get some kind of strap, uh, such as one like this, which is a black rapid strap, which is much more comfortable for carrying around. I wouldn't advise putting it around your neck because that doesn't do you any good, or probably the camera. Uh, it might even be an option that if you're in certain situations, you could even use a bean bag. So try and think about, you know, when you're looking at gear, try and think about how you're gonna carry it, how you're gonna support it, because all that is gonna affect the decision that you make. The next thing I think you should concentrate on a beginner is to use exposure compensation. So this is kind of a technical one to do with getting the correct exposure. Now the reason I think this is so good is because it's something where, I think it's fairly simple to do, it's fairly easy, uh, but it's something where you can make adjustments and you can get very quick feedback and you can see the difference to your images and I think you can learn pretty quickly with it. So it's gonna be fairly similar on most cameras. Uh, there'll be some kind of option where you can override the camera's meter so on some cameras it might be a wheel on the back uh, on a lot of cameras it's probably going to be a plus minus button so usually you just hold the plus minus button down and then you'll change the exposure a little bit so you'll either underexpose to make it darker or you'll overexpose to make it a bit brighter so i think this is absolutely fantastic again it gives you really really quick feedback uh, it can make a massive difference to improving your images i think it's a really great great way to learn exposure Number four is to find places for you to photograph. So this is nothing to do with equipment, it's nothing technical. Uh, this is more to do with enjoying the process. So as a beginner, you wanna be able to find places where you can get reasonably reliable opportunities. So they could be um, nature reserves, they could be local parks, ornamental gardens, they might even be in your own back garden. So the reason for this is that you just, you don't wanna to get too frustrated. I think as a beginner, it's really important that you're enjoying the process and you're learning as much as you can. And if you keep going to places where you keep getting disrupted and interrupted by people, dogs. So after all that, dog walker just basically put the birds up and you know, they've gone now. It's 
uh, whatever it is, then you just you are going to get frustrated and you're not going to want to continue to keep doing that. So try and seek out those places you maybe know some already, speak to other people, maybe you can join some groups, obviously you can find loads of stuff from searching on the internet but try as much as you can to have at least just you know a small handful of places where you know you can go and get reliable opportunities to photograph wildlife. And tip number five is just to enjoy it. Now I'm sure you got into wildlife photography because you love wildlife, you love being around wildlife, you love being out in the countryside and being out in nature. So try not to get too hung up on the equipment and technical side. I think as a beginner, if you do that, then potentially it can lead to a bit too much frustration and that stops you from moving forward. So I think it's really important that you just continue to enjoy those experiences out in nature as you would do uh, even without a camera and any pictures you can get would be a bonus. And yes, the technical side of it is important but that will come as you learn. So just enjoy the process as much as you can. If you found this video useful then do subscribe to the channel for more photography tutorials. Uh, make sure you click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. But make sure you click the bell icon to get make sure you click the bell icon make sure you click the bell icon to get notified every time i upload a new video thanks very much for watching i'll see you next time